The workflow feature is one of the most important systems in the law office. It assists the attorney and staff members in anticipating future tasks, deadlines, and prevents files from being neglected. This feature is designed to help save your firm time, ensure consistency, and increase the efficiency within your cases. In today's example, I'm going to focus on how an estate planning attorney would incorporate the workflow feature for new cases the firm obtains. It all begins with a process that you may already be doing, but I will be showing you how to automate that process here in the system based on specific tasks and calendar deadlines for your cases. To get started, you will navigate to your Settings tab, which is located under your name at the top right-hand corner. From that point, you're going to navigate to the Workflow tab on the bottom left-hand side. Here, you will be taken to a list of all of your firm's workflow templates. If your firm has not yet created a template, you will not see anything on this page. For now, we're going to go ahead and click Add Workflow. The first thing you need to do is give it a workflow name. This name is going to be used throughout the entire system, so try to be as specific as possible. We'll keep this simple and name this workflow Estate Planning Process Phase 1. The next step is to go ahead and assign a calculation date label. I want you to think of this as your trigger date. What needs to happen in order for you to get started on this process? You're always going to base your task and calendar events off of this date. They may be due before the trigger, or they may be due after the trigger date. You decide. Some examples of a calculation date label would be initial consultation, case evaluation, or for today's example, ours will be client retained. All tasks and events will be based off of the day the client retains our services. You can see that you can have up to two different calculation dates for one workflow. However, you would need to be able to enter both of those dates when you link the workflow to the case. If you are in a position that you will be waiting for a date to be assigned, for example, the date the petition was filed, you would create a separate workflow for that process. That workflow could be phase two of the estate planning process, and the calculation date label would be petition filed. For today, I'm going to go ahead and just stick with one calculation date label and go ahead and add the workflow. At this point, you're taken to the workflow template editors where you're able to add specific tasks and calendar events. So let's go ahead and assign our first task to this workflow. The first thing I need to do in the estate planning process is I'm going to obtain information and documents for my client. You can add checklist items that you associate with this task. So I'm going to go ahead and list out a few here for the information and documents. First, I need to locate the original will, if any. Secondly, I need to obtain certified copies of the death certificate. And I also need to obtain names and addresses of the beneficiaries. You can add a priority level here, as well as any description that should be noted, either for yourself or for other firm users. On the right, we see the workflow due date calculation. And this is where you will set up the task deadline based off of your initial trigger date. We will say that this task is going to be due five, and you can choose weekdays or calendar days, before or after the trigger date, which is client retained. In this example, I'm gonna say this task is due five weekdays after the client's been retained. Always make sure to note what the bottom says to confirm this is the correct information, and then go ahead and save. For my second task, I need to prepare initial forms. For the sake of time, I'll go ahead and just list a few here, beginning with the petition for probate, duties and liabilities, and I also need the bond waiver. 
in this one, I'll go ahead and not set a priority. And we'll say this is due 10 weekdays after we, the client retains my services. We'll add a couple more tasks here. Next, I need to get the client's signature. And I want to do this in the time frame of 20 weekdays after the client retains my services. For my fourth and final task here, I need to file the forms with the court. And the ideal time frame is going to be 30 days after the client's been retained. You can see here it's listing out all of my tasks in that order. I have a few checklist items. And if I ever need to edit or delete these items on this particular workflow template, it's very easy to do so right here. Now let's go ahead and add some automated calendar events and deadlines for this process. Some people will like adding the same task items to their calendar, or they may only want to include hard deadlines and dates. It's really gonna be your preference. Something that I like to do is with the event name, I'm gonna do an asterisk and type in client name first. That way, when I link this up to a case, I can fill in that client name and I'll be able to see that on the calendar. The first deadline I want to know is that I have to file petition for probate. If there was a location assigned to this calendar event, you could select it from the drop down menu. And the description box allows you to add any additional details. On the right hand side, you'll see this workflow calendar date calculation. Similar to before, you're going to assign a specific deadline, whether it's before or after the client's been retained. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and say this is due 30 weekdays after. And down on the bottom, you can either assign this as an all day event or have a specific start and end time. In this case, I'm going to make it an all day event and just have it appear as a reminder. When you do all day event, you're always going to want to type in one for the duration. Here below, you'll see event will be created 30 weekdays after the workflow client retained, and it's going to last for one day, which will mean it will show as a reminder. And finally, we'll go ahead and do one more, which will be a review case status. So this is a reminder for myself to review this case. And we're going to set this for 45 days after. This one, I can go ahead and set a hard deadline. And let's say I want to do this review by 9 a.m. And I'll give myself 30 minutes. Once you've set the parameters, go ahead and save that. Once the workflow has been created, you can now apply this workflow easily to any case of your designation. You'll just search for the case file up at the top right. We'll find our Anderson Matter case. And we're going to navigate to the workflow tab on the far right hand side. You can have up to multiple workflows added on the case file. So let's go ahead and apply that workflow we just created. State planning process phase one. Type in the date that the client was retained, which we'll use today's date. And decide if you want to share the tasks with everyone that's assigned to the case or just yourself. I encourage you guys to select everyone. That way you guys can communicate about the task items and know what's coming in the future for this case file and hit apply. Once you've applied the workflow, all of the individual items will be created for you. At this point, you can edit the initial calculation date label. If I change this workflow date, all of the other task due dates and calendar events will be changed as well. I can individually edit or delete items here. And where I had those asterisks for the client name, I could actually go ahead and type in that client name so that shows up on my calendar. I could edit the dates, the times, location. I could also choose to share this with any of my clients or contacts that are associated with this case and save it. So now everything is on here on this workflow. I can navigate to the main task and calendar tab so I can see that appear. 
So you can see here that we have obtain information and documents, prepare initial forms, get client signature, and file forms with the court. All of these are new and they're shared with everyone that is linked up to this case. As well as if we go to the calendar tab, we're going to be able to go here and see file petition for probate with the client's name as well as review case status, which is scheduled from 9 to 9.30 a.m. So I hope you find this process helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our customer success team, either by phone or email.